Welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld. A new, relatively short series, I think, for this one, because it's got a pretty weird theme to it, as you'll see as we dive in here, and as I've probably already talked about in the title and description and thumbnail and whatnot. Before we dive into this mod pack, I will say, because I have obviously talked about it before, next series we do following this one will be Vanilla Expanded Mechanoids. I've got, a, I, I think, what is a fairly interesting idea, but that mod pack will be based almost entirely on that one, so... This one is aimed to be kind of a stark contrast, and again, kind of a smaller one based on a mod that we have played previously that I thought, hey, I've got some good ideas for this, but it didn't really fit in the mod that we were playing at the time, and that is the You Do You mod, the automated work tab mod, where pawns do work based on their own priorities and, and passions and skills. Now that reminds me of a very old game that I'm sure many of you who are at least somewhat familiar with Rimworld will know of called Dwarf Fortress, which was essentially... I, I guess essentially, uh, you know, kind of RimWorld before RimWorld existed. It, it was the original colony simulator where you played as a bunch of dwarfs and it was all represented by text uh, as CR on the screen, essentially. So that game is getting a, a, a re-release soon and obviously a lot of people have been asking me to play it. But I thought, you know what, why don't we try and remake using the You Do You mod because it fits perfectly with that. Dwarf Fortress in RimWorld. The two worlds collide, and, and this, in theory, should be the ultimate colony simulator. As with all mod packs, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put together a Steam Workshop collection with an install guide and some reasoning in there behind certain mods. What we have here is, is very heavily based on Dwarf Fortress, so the races that you'll see in this, the only races you'll see in this, are the races that you see in Dwarf Fortress. I've had to make some substitutes here and there. For example, Dwarf Fortress has enemies like demons, uh, chimeras, kind of weird beast men, um, you know, snake men and dog men and weird stuff like that. So I've made some substitutions as and where is appropriate, things like alpha animals coming in, um, things like megafauna coming in to replace some of those. But what I have is gonna be pretty great in my opinion. So let's just dive straight in. I have a scenario set up and of course my usual prepare carefully uh, preset built. So what we've got down at the bottom here, we have, of course, Dwarf Fortress. A band of dwarfs are sent out from the Empire to scout out and colonize a local mountain, which is believed to contain mighty riches. Now imagine all of that is spelt right. Though word spreads quickly, and other factions have too learned of this great treasure held within a lonely mountain. Your faction will be a dwarf colony. Start with three people chosen from three. It's actually four people, but again, that doesn't take it to account. Prepare carefully. And with the dwarf settlement, we have a hundred starting opinion. Using a mod as well, I have turned the Dwarf Settlement into the Empire, quote-unquote, on this planet. So we can uh, gain rank with them, we can do quests for them, and gain psychic powers. And you know how Empire works in Remote, of course. As this is Medieval, though, we are playing with Vanilla Expanded Medieval. So that takes out all of, obviously, the endgame technology, mechanoids, things like that. So we are playing in a truly Medieval scenario. Now, because of the nature of this, because we are playing in a mountain, mountains are obviously quite defensible, because we are playing with not many you know, weapons and high-tech and things like that. I've decided, let's go losing is fun. Now, there is no magic in this mod pack. This is very much low magic fantasy. You know, dragons are probably the closest thing we've got to a truly magical thing in the world. Um, we don't have access to to magic. There's like enchanted armor or legendary artifacts, but there is no rim of magic or anything like that in the game. So let's dive in here. Well, there are settings I've set up in faction control. I'll talk more about that on the mod page and maybe at the end of the video as well. But basically, I've predetermined certain factions to spawn again, the ones that are in Dwarf Fortress or as close as I can get, but none of the other ones, like for example, no mechanoids here. So we are going to go for the Seed of Grey. We are going to say planet size is tiny and we are going to go for 25% globe coverage. And we're just going to see where we end up. That's not, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finally, harmony has been achieved in the ocean. Oh, no. <laughs> what I meant to say was with the seed eggplant on tiny planet size, tiny globe coverage, we are going to have perfect. Look at that. Wow, that is an interesting one, huh? And actually kind of makes a lot of sense here. So we've got in the world a kobold faction down towards the southwest. We have the dwarfs themselves in the, uh, pretty much in the, in the plains, bizarrely enough. That's, oh, the tropical rainforest. We've got rainforest dwarfs. That's okay. The humans have a little island there to themselves. Father's Royal Court. We have elves, some some sort of elves. Anyway, I believe those are the moon elves on the main road. And then all the way up in the north in the chaos wastes, we have the, uh, I believe, goblins and orcs. Or those, those might be kobolds. Those might be goblins. I might have that backwards. So we've got kobolds and we have orcs as well, which I think is fairly appropriate. So let's dive in then. Now, there is a caveat to this playthrough, and that is we have to choose impassable terrain. And I know what you're thinking. 
You fool, you can't play on impossible terrain. All my friends, but that's the entire point of this particular playthrough. So we are going to go for any one of, of these, well, again, impassable map tiles, uh, which actually gives us a huge amount of options here. We go island, we can go coastal, we can go chaos wastes if we really feel like a, like a proper challenge here. Um, no one's got western coast and caves. Now, I don't want to start too far away from our regular dwarf allies there. Uh, as you can see, ally plus 100. Uh, we've got Temporal Forest. I, 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 someone said last series that I always play in the kind of the same areas. I think I've got to play Chaos Waste, right? Would you guys ever forgive me if I didn't see this new area? Let's give it a go then. Chaos Wastes all the way in uh, the furthest northern point on this continent. We've got a road connecting us up there, but we are quite isolated from our Dwarven allies. Let's see what this does for us. Wow, this is quite a tricky one. Average temperature of minus 6.7 degrees. We're in a mountain, so that is going to be uh, interesting. 10 days of growing time. Jesus. Oh, man. I suppose we can probably grow mushrooms and things like that. Maybe hardier plants because we are a dwarven people. Finally, you're wondering, who have we got to guide us through this series? Who are our starting characters? My friends, let me introduce you firstly to our colony leader. The man chosen by the dwarven emperor himself. Squiffy Ghast, cave child turned war master, a legend in dwarven society and a hero to his people. Chosen not only for his legendary war skills, but his ability to lead and inspire others and bring them to his banner. Just what this colony needs to unify it. He is incredibly athletic along with his, uh, his, his hero talent there, which gives all sorts of bonuses that we'll talk about actually when we get into game. He's an incredible character, mighty, athletic and hits hard. He's got a terrible downside, though, that nobody knows. A, a horrible secret he's harbored all his life. He's squeamish. Hates the sight of blood. Hates the sight of corpses. Too much of it. And unfortunately, just sets him off. Vomiting is just part of life for his, according to Vanilla Traits Expanded. <laughs> what a guy. I'm very excited to see how he'll play out, especially with these talents. This is an incredible mod that I found called Rim Traits. Um, adds medieval-type talents to characters so we'll see exactly what that has in store for us second character why is beyond his years because he's only 31 because dwarves can only go up to 120 and i'm pretty sure they'll just die at that age we have o long johnson royal bastard and geologist expert though shunned by his royal father maybe even son of the emperor himself he was given a royal stipend secretly on the down low and trained to become one of the greatest geologist ever to grace dwarven society he is an architect a true builder and the the man who will lay strong foundations for this colony great construction and impeccable mining an unstoppable man and you'll see why that is going to be relevant very very soon unfortunately he took the stones a little too literally and enjoys himself a bit of the uh a bit of the dwarven green a bit of, a bit of the old pipe weed if you know what i'm saying there uh unfortunately to pay for i mean being let's be honest being a miner here does not pay well because it's the king's land and if you find the gold it's the king's gold it does have to do a little bit of uh you know a little bit of embezzlement a little bit of embezzlement maybe he's done a little bit of prospecting for the king and just happens to find some gold i can go in his pocket to pay for his uh his his less than virtuous habits our third character we have dirk scrubber known by some as the admiral because my friends he sets course for only one thing and that is fine medical doctoring the hippocratic oath or whatever the dwarven equivalent of that would be he's got good hygiene because at the end of the day he's a medical student he's a healer he's a legendary dwarven healer to make up for the fact that we are playing on what is essentially merciless difficulty but he has a terrible bedside manner and some say he takes it a little too far and goes a little bit mad almost a little bit too eager to help out his patients and that, and that does go against him sometimes and he has a wooden finger due to his uh his, his kind of uh headstrong Let's put it that way. His headstrong surgery. Finally, we have the beautiful dwarven lady, Mayonnaise Dogger. Or Mayo for short, because I'm in hindsight worried I might get a little demonetized for that name. <laughs> She's going to help keep this colony going. The supplier, the grower, the bringer of life into, into this here dwarven settlement. She is a farmer. An incredible bonus to her there. Plant work speed, plant harvest yields. And all sorts of other... Oh, you might have noticed as well, sorry, all the dwarves have a double passion in mining. That's because they're dwarves, and you shouldn't question it. She does have a terrible downside, though. She may love plants, but she absolutely fucking hates animals. She can't stand them. She wants to see them bleed, and my god, she wants to kill them herself. Killing animals will please them, 
and the colony losing an animal is the cherry on top because she is a terrible person plants only but definitely no no traditional husbandry there with the on on the animal front let's see what we can do this is going to be fairly interesting because again they do have limitations on what jobs they can do it's based on their passions it's based on what they feel like on their mood essentially we have some starting tools here, but nothing else beyond that. Mithril pickaxe, mithril hammer, mithril shovel, and the adamantite trident. A gift from the Emperor to Squiffy Ghast, our war master. Let's dive in and see what this world is going to throw at us. I know what you're all thinking. How on earth could he recreate War Fortress in a game that has no Z levels? Have I installed a Z level mod, something that allows us to drill down and spawn in new layers? Well, of course, we're playing on Merciless, and that would make the game very, very easy if we were to do that, because you can just hide on... A separate layer so instead of having mountains downwards how about we just have mountains outwards and when i say mountain my friends i mean mountain i mean mountain the true dwarf fortress this is gonna be oh my god it's fucking huge <laughs> holy shit <laughs> maybe i went a little bit overkill there wow this is with the camera mod too so bear in mind the regular room mod zoom is like here we can, I mean, we, we can do whatever. Look at this. This is ridiculous. We can fill the entire screen with impassable mountain. Now, there is supposedly somewhere in the center of this mountain an oasis, a light in the darkness, somewhere where we can, you know, safely grow crops or some sort of clearing anyway. And it's our job to find it. Now, normally it's in the middle, but of course, with the size of this mountain, it could be fucking anywhere, to be honest. I see why they call it impassable. This is going to take a long time. So what I'm thinking then, let's let's plan this out sensibly here. Because I don't want to just immediately start mining into this thing. Firstly, we'll need some food. We've got vanilla fishing. I don't even know if we can designate fishing spots at this. We can. Okay, that's very good. So we could start by fishing. Or we could start a very small thin strip of farm. And maybe set up like a like a base somewhere roughly in the middle of, of the mountain, right? Just build a very temporary base so we can kind of regroup and, and get prepared and, and have beds and, and somewhere where we can really lash out from into this big old fucking mountain. Wow, this is this is over the top. We have no control over their work tabs at all with the you do you mod. So what have they got here? So Admiral is up for cooking right now. Uh, Squiffy is happy to be Wardener or any of these other jobs. But again, if, if, if there are things that come above that, they will focus on that instead. Uh, Olong. He is uh, a true geologist there. Miner, driller, miner, plant cutting. Fair enough. Mayo, plant cutter, harvester, grower, or cook there as well. Well, let's get everybody equipped with the tools that they uh, they really should have. Uh, let's give Olong... I mean, either the hammer or the pickaxe will work for Olong. But I think I've got to give him the pickaxe, right? Well, we could give Admiral the pickaxe and Olong the hammer. That way, it can. It, he's got a double passion in mining because they all do. So that could help train him up as a backup job. Um... I think let's give you the hammer. Let's give Mayo the shovel, because of course uh, she is our she is our grower. And then of course the Adamantine Trident to Squiffy, but it, we could always give Squiffy the hammer too, you know, getting to help out where we can. I think food and some sort of starting structure is the best way to go about it. So what are these? Twisted tree, because we're in the uh, obviously we're in the chaos wastes here, so no harvestable crops at all. Just a bunch of twisted trees. Um, my god, this map is huge. I'll just go chop all wood, because we haven't really got much else to do for the time being. We could start getting some fish in early. So let's go, uh, fishing zone. Is that even big enough for one fishing zone? No. Uh, oh, it is. Okay, good. I did tweak the settings slightly, because I figured, you know, we're going to be right at the map edge here. Um, okay, so we can get some fish there, and then I think we can get some fish from this area here too, can't we? That's pretty good. So, let's go small fish and small fish. Just kind of catch what we can. They're only small people, after all. They don't need a big old tuna. Where the hell is the middle of the map? <laughs> um, I guess I'll try and plan it out here. While the map edge is over the... Look at that. The, the impassable mountain is over the map edge itself. We can mine that still, can't we? You can mine... Yeah, you can mine anywhere. That's good. Otherwise, that would have been... Uh... An interesting playthrough. There's the middle of the mountain. So I'll start building, I mean, obviously what I can around here. Oh my god, we're going to have to mine into the mountain at least a little bit. Can we even grow crops this close to the map edge? We can. But none of it's good to grow in, huh? What was the fertility here? It's all stony soil. Oh, that sucks. So we do have, of course, vanilla plants expanded. Um, Why don't we then use something I've, I very rarely use, and that is... Oh, we can't even till the soil. Ooh, Okay. We're limited to 70% growing zones. That's going to be interesting. 
Well, fuck it. Okay, I guess we'll um, guess we'll embrace it. Right, okay, let's stick down... What do you think? Just rice to start off with? We could always mine this map edge and, and open it up so we've got as much room as possible here. That would at least be something. It's like the hardiest crop we've got here. Because we need something with a minimum growth temperature of zero on that one. Same with cabbage. Um... That means a zero. Oh, they're all zero. Really? How did I not know that? Okay. Um, well, look, let's throw down. I mean, obviously, that will be, if you're at zero degree, it'll be like 1% growing time, right? Um, let's throw down some. I mean, I feel like potato is still the best one to go for just because it is that hardier crop. Uh, I guess we're in hard soil fertility crop at 70% on that. Corn is also 70. And that has a lower fertility sensitivity on the cabbage. Let's throw down some cabbages too. I am for the time being going to give them a relatively flexible schedule because we don't have much control over them. Realistically, we could go just anything across the board. We could even go recreation across the board and ensure that they are as happy as possible. Especially playing on Merciless. I always find that basically cramming in as much recreation time as possible is the, is the best way to save yourself. Because the last thing you need is during a raid where it's life or death, having people break just from, you know, standing in line waiting for the enemies to get to you, especially in such a big mountain map. So we've got some crops down here. We've got a little bit of potato. We've got some rice. We've got some cabbage. And then this is all onion down here. God damn, what a mess. And I, I guess we'll start mining into the mountain now so that we can at least put down just like, a, just like a forward base. So this is the very, very middle of the map. So let's go ahead and just dig this out very, very slightly. What do you think, like 7x7? Seven seven? That should do it. I feel as far as hard starts go in Rimworld, this is definitely one of the harder ones. We've got no food. They're just... Fishing up fishes and, and slurping them down while they're still wriggling. We've got nowhere to sleep. We've got, I mean, two patches of, of dirt <laughs> to farm on it in terms of width. And we've got to mine out, well, basically an entire fucking mountain. At least now they can sleep indoors. Can I but notice? But the map is shaking occasionally, and I don't know why. Uh, has it stopped? It was like when he was... Wait. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I guess we've worked out why. Hello. A metallivore and a rhino and a radiac were stuck in here. Mithril grand sculpture. Limestone. <gasps> you know what? As far as starting bases go, that's not bad. I guess any ancient dangers that might have will have probably had animals spawn in them simply because there's nowhere else for the animals to spawn in. This is all water, so they can't spawn in here. And obviously the rest, you think of how many animals are on a Rimworld map normally, then double the size of that map and then fill it all with rock and think of how many areas they've got to actually spawn in. Okay, you know, as a starting base, this is certainly nicer and it gives us much better access to the sea. So as a, as a more temporary base, I'm kind of happy to live here. We can take these apart because we really don't need them. Uh, the mithril sculpture I'm happy to I'm happy to to maybe just install. I mean it is quite a nice structure after all. Oh no, no, no. Stop that. It, it's been, it's been what? Two days and you already want to murder a, a quarter of my colonists. Which is technically true, but a little misleading. Hey. How, what, what am I gonna stop him here? Um Mayo. Here's what I think. Is what I think. Uh, I don't rarely do this, so bear with me here. Let's get you. I'm not assigned to constructing. Who's our builder? Build. Admiral, go and arrest him. We'll turn this into a prison, and then we'll turn the other place. I mean, a temporary prison. We'll turn the other place into into our base, I guess. Oh God. Okay, Mayo, just watch out. You Shadow Olong. He's got food poisoning, so he should be relatively easy to wrestle down. Uh, this this is mine now. Thank you. And you, you're under arrest. For murderous intent. Oh, there you go. He's chilled out. Right, you're no longer under arrest. As long as you promise to be good. Another area to reveal. What have we got this time? A big old woodlouse. Oh my god. Oh, I thought it was gold. Whoa, a solarite there. What the hell is that? Oh my god, it's legendary. Thank you, Mr. Woodlouse. Ah, uh, Holy shit. Wow, that's, that's real good. Oh, it's gonna take them... I mean, it's gonna take them ages to get over there. So I think I'm... You know what? In hindsight, I'm gonna cancel that. Just remember it's there. And we'll go and grab it at some other point. It'll also raise our colony wealth by, uh, I mean, about 6,800 roughly, uh, if my maths is right. So that is probably just inviting doom on this colony. Let's get something built to start off with before we before we worry about that. It's the perfect base. Look at it. 
It's incredible. I, <laughs> I just love the fish on the floor. <laughs> oh. Since it looks like you'll be here for a while. Well, I probably wouldn't go that far. Mayo thinks you should give your faction a name. What about... Uh... What about... Faction is obvious. We were sent out here by the Dwarven Emperor to establish a, a keep in order to counterattack against the Chaos Factions. That's why we're up here in this extremely defensive part of the Chaos Wastes. So the Dwarf Insurgency Counterkeep is an incredible name. And this particular settlement we're going to call the Dirty Hole. Why? I don't know. Come up with something yourself. Um. <laughs> Sir, where did you find that? The rhinoceros died of malnutrition. And you just decided to leave it on our doorstep. I mean, to be fair, we could butcher it if we're bloody fast. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We could put a full-on butcher spot. Look at all these bloody blocks we've got. Hang on. Uh, wooden butcher table. 95. Okay, I can't. I take that back. Wooden butcher spot. Uh, butcher creature. Do forever. Who's our chef? That's Admiral. Admiral chef? Chef Admiral? What is that? Animal fat. Oh, maybe for, like, making, uh, tallow. For, like, candles and things like that. Uh... <laughs> Where are you finding these things? Malnutrition. I don't even know what a metallovore is. Oh, nice. Bit of a... It looks like an insect, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Insect chitin, but it drops... Regular meat? Nothing? Oh, look. Metallovore meat. Oh, cool. Oh, shit. The Tantra Coalition. All right, squad up. Uh, Okay, so you've got that. Pickaxe, hammer, shovel. Where are they? Uh, it's it's one guy. It's an orc. It's a big stinky orc. Get him. Fucking dead Shrek. You're dead Shrek. Squiffy. Kill. Right up Shrek's ass. Get him. Oh, God. Uh, go behind him. Flank him. Flank him. Flank him. Squiffy, don't die on me. Don't die on me here. I don't know if anybody's doctoring. Okay, there we go. There we go. Calling Dream Sword. I got a sword for you right here, pal. Not, not that. Before you... No, not that. There's a pickaxe. You know what I meant. Look at this. Active cooler. So the elf the visitor left behind four components. So we can build one of those. Heats up liquid in the vacuum. Resulting gas absorbs heat and creates ice. Cools the room enough to keep spoilables fresh, but not frozen. Requires coal or charcoal. Oh, and then we got passive cooler, which is, uh, you know, it's a passive cooler. You know how that'd be. Uh, okay, so if we find a little bit of steel, and then coal will obviously be just in this giant monolith of a mountain somewhere. We could also burn down some wood. Uh, I suppose we could swap out, like, our wooden beds for... Oh, we can't make stone beds, but we could swap out the, uh, the dresser and the end tables and shit. Abrador! Hey, that's food that we don't have to refrigerate. Welcome! Still right there. I'm still right there, you fool. You're sleeping on it. Get that. Give me, give me some of that. Uh, hold on. Prioritize. I want to see what this active cooler does. I was about to build a passive cooler, but... Oh! Really? <laughs> I looked away for two seconds. Are you fucking kidding me right now? Is is this a joke? <laughs> what? You can't hit my doctor with lightning. Well, I mean, on the plus side, if anyone's going to get hit by lightning, I suppose the doctor is probably the best candidate. Do not prioritize not assigned to doctoring. He won't... Work preference, patient or bed rester. He won't do anything else because he's... Because he's injured. Hey, here's an idea, moron. You could tend yourself and then you wouldn't be injured. Oh, I'm... Uh, can you tend? Prioritize tending. Well, look, at least someone over here is, uh, is, is capable of doing some decent work. <laughs> Three point... Oh, no. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? Oh, long as one's were murder strides, he decided to kill Admiral because he was tired. Run, Admiral. <laughs> oh, God, Admiral, run. <laughs> Got anyone else nearby that can arrest him? I sent them to chop down all the wood, because obviously we're going to need it to keep our, well, everything cool. Run, Admiral. Get down here. We'll just see if we can arrest him. Got him. Okay. That's twice. That's twice so far. Two different people. Can we... I, I sent him down here, to be honest. It's kind of my fault. I did send him down to go and get that fancy statue, but I thought if we got that, like, it's 9,600 beauty. That would... Even, even though they're living in a, basically a hole in the wall, it, they would be... They'd be pretty happy about it. Fucking Labradors have eaten all our meals. 
24 meals there were. Well, we just happened to find some more meat. That was pretty fortunate because obviously I didn't want my people starving to death anytime soon. So that should, uh, that should keep us going for a little while. But again, without any cooling, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Mafia boss named Rakionk. Hello. Uh, Goblin Man. Goblin Mafia boss. Is he good? Oh, 5.69, uh, 6.59 crafting is quite nice, huh? Uh, 39 days of paralytic abasia. We do need a finger for Admiral, right? <laughs> I think I'm going to take his clothes and leave him for the wolves because he's got full devil strands. So I think I'm I think I'm all right with that. I'm going to I'm going to take that and then I'm going to kind of banish him. Is that is that what we're allowed to do here? Chronically ill. What is that? Minus 3 mood. Rest gain is lower toxicity. Oh my god, he's terrible. Taylor. Uh tailoring speed 10% crafting plus 4. Yeah, I'll... Oh, God. Just finish him off. Just finish him off. We don't care about goblins here. Oh, the first harvest. Hey, this is a momentous day for our little dwarf people. We're getting a little bit of food in that isn't made of a dog. <laughs> More importantly, rice has obviously a very, very good shelf life. So I think what I want to do here is... Can we not restrict that? Why am I not doing that? We could just say only let Admiral do the cooking. Oh, that's a much better idea, you fool. Oh... First my colonists and now my potatoes too. This truly is merciless. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, so far it's been it's been pretty easy. Don't let the game hear me say that though. We haven't really had any issues at all. I'm dreading this first raid or this next raid, I should say, obviously when it turns up because we've got a lot of wealth very quickly. Uh, although to be fair, that did come in after we got the the statue here. Jesus, we're already up to what like thirty four thousand. What the hell happened there? What's like 4,000 of something? Was that the goblin? Well, speak of the devil. Group of subjects from the Tater Dynasty. Three of them. Oh my god, they're armored. They're like really armored too. Where are they, where are they going? They're going around the long way. <laughs> Not going around the long way. Mayo's down there. Oh, Mayo, you idiot. You're going to have to fight Landry by yourself. Um, what the? Admiral's struggling with the hair. Okay, we're going to have to send these guys in as backup then pretty fast. I think we just take Mayo and just run her into a corner. Maybe, are you good at building? Um, you're okay. We, we could get to like, take apart one of these granite urns and just block herself in. By the time they bash the doors down, we might be able to get our reinforcements over there. No! I can't believe you've done this. Okay. Uh, this could be a problem, I won't lie. Okay, okay. Run, 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 run. As fast as you can. Here they come, here they come. Right, okay. Is there any way we can kind of trap them in here? Like, this would be a pretty good position to hit them from. Are they going through the top or the bottom? They are going through the top. I mean, this is also an alright position to hit them from. Go like there. That'll do it. Uh, where? What is taking you guys so long? Squiffy, back off. Back off, Squiffy. Uh, let's, let's go like there then. That'll do. Run, Squiffy. She's just getting free hits. Fucking haul ass, pal. Good lord, the Dwarf Emperor's relying on you and you are uh, slow. You're a slow man. Right, kill. Get her. Nice. Good hits, good hits, good hits. Phillips has been disarmed. No, no, no. Olong's been disarmed by Phillips. Get, get, the, get the pickaxe, get the pickaxe, get the pickaxe. Go. Right, kill. You attack. Oh my god, it's all over. Mayo is dead. Phillips has disarmed Squiffy. What are you talking about? It's all down to Squiffy. He's done it. He's actually done. What? How was he able to? What was it the bludgeon? What the hell was disarming us so frequently? Something special about this guy? Bio? Martial artist. Oh, look at that. Learn a specific move in melee combat which allows him to disarm opponents. Oh, God. Okay. Um, What was special about you? Did you have anything going for you? Swordsman as well. Well, that was a, the worst starting raid I think we could have possibly had. Who are we going to save? I mean, Mayo is dead. Long live Mayo. Um, Olong is dying in seven hours. You're dying. Can we do a bit of field medicine here? Stabilize here? Nothing. Uh, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Are you even a doctor right now? Because if not, we are fucked. Won't do anything besides bed rest because he's injured. He won't do anything besides bed rest because he's fucking injured. And he just goes and vomits on the orc. <laughs> Admiral's up. He's rescuing Olong. 
Oh, long is no longer capable. You are the worst doctor I've ever met in my entire life. You are the worst doctor. Squiffy is down. It's the food poisoning. Fall has begun. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. I would definitely call this the fall. Okay, Squiffy's up. Squiffy's up. Get the trident. Get the trident. Draft up. Rescue Olong. Olong's got seven hours. Run, 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 run. It's cold outside, so we'll be able to. He'll be able to stay down for longer. <laughs> Get him. Oh, it's Admiral. Okay, stand your ground. You will not have him. You will not have him. Stab. Oh shit. Oh shit. Don't kill him. Don't kill Admiral. Admiral's still our friend. Okay, okay. Admiral's down in nine. Olong's down in seven. Rescue Olong. Go, get him out of there. <laughs> I'm I'm so angry. <laughs> I'm fucking fuming at this already. <laughs> one, e one episode and it's been pure... Stop! Oh my god, because he's squeamish. He's carrying a bleeding man home and he's vomiting everywhere. <laughs> oh, this is unbelievable. There you go, he's finally back. Can you tend to him? He won't tend to him. Not assigned to doctoring. I mean, we could rescue them and just hope a miracle occurs and they suddenly stop bleeding to death. And now he's collapsed. I... Just give me a minute. Ah! Uh, he doesn't actually seem to be bleeding out, though. Death in seven hours, death in nine hours. And they're not... Two hours? Three hours? Four? Bleeding out in 12 hours? They're, he they're healing? What? And, well, we've got to deal with fucking kobolds anyway. Like Squiffy. My god, this is a... This is a doomed run. This is a doomed run. Get him. Get him. That one runs away for cover for being a cow. Nice work, nice work. Get him. Come on, bring him down. Bring him down. Okay, okay, good shit. We could send Olong in. Why are they healing? I don't understand. They're just kind of patched up. Is it, is it something to do with this thing? So, Solarite. What? I mean, obviously it isn't all of our people because Mayo's fucking dead. Did you lose anything? You didn't lose anything important. You just bled out. I was thinking like maybe her head got destroyed and that's why she died. But no, she did just bleed out. Yeah, look. So why are these guys healing? Is this the magic of the mountain? What the hell's going on here? <sighs> well, I think we can call this series an absolute success. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I, you know, I genuinely thought when I was throwing together this mod pack, is this the right idea? Do I want to play with You Do You again, knowing its, its issues and the problems that can arise from it? The answer is no. No, I do not. What the fuck is a chaos storm? Those caught out in the storm will slowly be tainted, causing health issues, berserk rages, and possibly death, or worse, expelled. What does that mean? It could last over a season, or it could last forever. Admiral's finally fucking dead. He died of malnutrition because no one's capable of nursing. Well then. Thank you all for watching, I guess. Uh, let me know if you want to see more Dwarf Fortress. Maybe we can refine the idea a little bit based on your feedback from the comment section and over on Discord and other such things. I'll see what I can do with it. We might, we, you know, we might not play inside the big mountain. We might go wave-based survival rather than playing with this fucking you do you mod. I'll leave it up to you guys. If you don't want to see any dwarfs, say, no dwarfs here, sir, please. And I will, I, they will be gone. You will never have to look upon them again. Uh... There's potential here for something good, but I'm not entirely sure what, so... Yeah. Thank you to El Scorchio82, Arctic Knight, Altari, Out of All Context, Jess, Plumby, Solothol, Scaps, I'm Sagatair, Levi, Hezron, Baldor Hammer, K, Scarlet Bard, and everyone else at the Executive Producer Tiers over on Patreon... <clears throat> ...for making this episode possible in the first place. I might have accidentally muted my microphone. Thank you as well to... Mawen Kadalbe, Callum James 3, Blue Chaos, Scott, Matteo, Distress Morana, Bellman, Cass, Flom, Lilac, Coldest Flame, Roger Wilco, and Major Mythical as well for their support. What a terrible run.